Now for structured English. Structured English is possibly the simplest of them all, right? It's you basically writing a, a numbered list of what you want to do. Um, like for example, for this flowchart that we just made, that numbered list would be something like this. Uh, input a number from user and add it to sum keep repeating an sorry, until is greater than 10. Once Am I audible now? Yeah, I should be, I think. I don't know what happened. My internet probably cut off or something. All right, so as I was saying, this is structured English. It's basically a list of steps. And from Sir Zan's note here, I'll read a few requirements for structured English to be like CIE acceptable. Um, you need to have it's, yeah, you need to write it in such a way that you can extract variable names from it if need be. So like here, input number from user and add it to sum. Keep repeating until sum is greater than 10. Once sum, so I, I, I used sum here and I use num instead of number, but it's kind of the same thing. So if you were to look at just the structured English, you could sort of like form an identifier table if you wanted to. And so if you write proper structured English, that should be possible. Input and output can be identified from the wording used like enter, read, print, or write. So enter would be something like input. Or, or read would be something like input. While print or output would be something like output. Selection can be shown using if, then choose, stuff like that. You can show a for loop, like you can use any of the loop names. Like I here I used keep repeating until. So this kind of suggests that this is a until, repeat until loop. I could just as easily say while, I could cut all of this and I could just say while sum is greater than 10, repeat, uh, repeat step one. All right, I could just as easily state that. And that's basically it. And here you, you need to show like ad operations as well. So I said, add it to sum. So, so you, you know, you can, you know what you can, you want to do when you actually like translate and whatnot. And the last thing we're gonna cover today is stepwise refinement. And stepwise re refinement is basically decomposition 
but with structured english it's when you break down um like like for example step number 1 into step number 1 and step number 1.2 make up that entire step so let me think of an example uh real quick see example is pretty good let's just use that he says structure reading with that to run map marathon in hours minutes and seconds and step 2 is calculate sorry calculate and store time in seconds and i'll put marathon time in seconds so i'm not going to fully do the step is fine for this i'm just going to show you an example and that should make it pretty clear what to do enter time i'm it in hours minutes and seconds so you could say 1.1 enter hours uh 1.1.1 enter hours uh validate to make sure um any reasonable range like 2 to 5 or 6 make sure input is between 2 and 6 inclusive 1.1.2 store input in variable and then there will be 1.2 enter minutes and you kind of do the same thing you would 1.2.1 you would validate such that input is greater than 0 and less than 60 so yeah and 1.2.2 would be store input in variable here i forgot to call the variable something hours store in variable minutes so i hope you guys get the idea but you're basically breaking down for example step number 1 into multiple steps which then you're breaking down further into multiple steps until what you're doing per step is the simplest thing you can do it's basically decomposition but with structured english does this kind of make sense is it clear all right glad to hear that uh so i think this was the last question last thing that we had to cover in algorithms um any more questions or anything confusions or something or comments